What's going on guys and welcome back to the Good Old Boys channel. Today we're going to be replacing swing arm bushings in the Hawk 250. Here's the miles and the hours. So first we need to remove the rear swing arm and I'm going to show you guys how to save some time when doing this. So first thing I'm going to remove is this caliper. So all you have is two bolts here. The whole thing comes off. That's out of the way. I do have to remove my trailer hitch. That's pretty simple, but you guys won't have to do that. Along to go with the caliper, you also have two eight millimeter bolts here and here. Those have to come off. After that, you're gonna have the shock bolt, the main swing arm bolt that has to come out. And you're also gonna have to take the chain off of this sprocket after you get the swing arm bolt out. So I'm gonna throw you guys on time lapse, take care of all this, and then we'll come back after. So the swing arm is off the bike. As you guys can see, I've went ahead and left the rear wheel and axle on the swing arm. And this is just gonna save you a lot of time and aggravation when you're putting the bike back together. So the next step here is to actually remove the old swing arm bushings. Now, if you guys followed along on the channel here, uh, there's another video where I put some actual temporary swing arm bushings in here. And I actually just did it on this one side. And so I used some fuel line to put in here, but all we're gonna do is take these needle nose pliers and pluck this out and again like i said all this was was fuel line tubing just for a temporary bushing so i want to explain something for a minute here so on your normal bushing it's going to look something like this you're going to have an inner steel kind of race to the bushing and then a rubber part and then another outer steel race to the bushing so what you're gonna to wanna to do here is it's gonna make the most sense to remove the rubber part of the bushing and the inner uh, steel part of the bushing. And this is gonna free up some space and allow you guys to get these bushings out a lot easier. So once you've done that, you're gonna end up with a wide open hole, kind of just like this. And all that's gonna be left of the bushing is the very outer liner. So if you look up in here, it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but you're gonna take your needle nose pliers reach up in here <clears throat> and you're going to be grabbing for this spacer that goes across the middle of the swing arm here so now if we look down in here we can see that we have an empty tube all the way until we get to the bushing on the other side so this is exactly what we want i know a lot of you guys don't have bearing puller sets or anything like that so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how I would do it the old-fashioned way with just a screwdriver. So I actually went ahead and got some vice grips and a punch, and we're going to see where we can get with this. It's slowly but surely going. Okay, so the inner race is pushed down at this point, and you guys have to realize I'm not trying to push the whole bushing inside the swing arm. What I'm trying to do here is just remove the rubber and the inner race of the bushing. So what happens next is completely insane. There's about two or three hours worth of footage here that you guys just don't want to see. What happened was I got a screwdriver jammed beside the bushing and long story short, I had to get a gigantic 16 pound sludge hammer. It was like a huge, huge, ordeal broke a lot of stuff uh yeah it just it wasn't good so here's the end result so i had to break out the big guns i got a 16 pound sludge hammer so we'll see if this will work man guys <laughs> this is unreal uh man on freaking real i broke a brand new screwdriver into three pieces this big chisel, one inch diameter chisel, broke. I, mean, I have never had anything like this happen before. Um, this is crazy, but I, I'll tell you guys, this was not supposed to happen. This screwdriver got jammed in there, so I had to try and get it unstuck using the chisel. The chisel got jammed in there. Everything got jammed in there. So this is not something that normally happens. This stuff stuck in here so tight that we took the outer race of the bushing out. 
this is just crazy. So I'm going to show you guys how to get one of these uh, outer races of the bushing out. Remember, we only got one out. So we have, we have, uh, well, this side here, we can see we got this bushing out. And look at how, look at the shape of this axle tube now. What the heck, man? Unreal. So <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, yeah, like I said, onto removing this outer casing or race, whatever you want to call it. What I've done is I've taken a flathead screwdriver and you're going to need a screwdriver that you don't care about for this one. And you guys can see how I've ground it here. Hopefully. And you see how it's got a biting edge. I've rounded the back side off. So you're going to take the rounded part of the screwdriver and put it towards the uh, swing arm like this. And what this is going to do is help us pry this casing off of the wall, which this is the easiest way to get these bushings, bushing casings out of here. Let me show you guys. So right here, you can see we've started to peel the casing of the bushing off of there. That's exactly what we want. So it's much easier to peel peel this thing apart than to try and press this out of here. There we go. You guys can see the bushing is actually moving down in there and you can see how much space we have. So basically this is really what you wanna do is you wanna peel that casing apart just like this until it starts moving. Take our punch. And knock this bushing out of there just like this now you guys can see a better picture of the goal we're trying to achieve and sometimes the casing won't actually cut like this sometimes it'll just kind of push inwards and that's fine if you push the screwdriver all along here and cave this in it'll make it a smaller diameter once you pull the screwdriver out you'll be able to get this bushing out easily so guys uh, this hole over here of course had some issues you guys could see it was out of round. I've already gone ahead, hammered it back straight or round, I guess. Now I'm gonna take a file like this that's rounded and just kind of clean this up. Now, you guys won't have to do any of this, hopefully. Um, like I said, the screwdriver getting stuck in here is not a normal thing. Same thing for the other side. So guys, now it's time to put the new bushings in the swing arm here. First, I wanna give you guys some measurements. So if you wanna go out on your own, use these measurements to buy your own bushings, you can. First of all, the inner diameter of the swing arm here, 24.76. And I know this hole isn't perfectly round, guys. I, unfortunately, it got all messed up. If you guys wanna go back in time and check out the other video I had, where I measured this when it was still perfect, you can. It's right around 24 and a half in most spots. And for the measurement for the original bushing, the length is 41. And again, this bushing isn't perfect either, of course. But the outer diameter is right around 24, 25 mil. Okay inner diameter here of the original bushing 14.47 14.57 swing arm axle bolt here have a measurement of 13.65 13.81 13 13.79 so long story short here guys you're looking for a bushing with a measurement of an outside diameter of 25, a width of around 41 or 42 millimeters, and an inner diameter of right around 14 millimeters. So guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, it was extremely difficult finding bushings for this thing. Uh, in fact, these bushings that I have over here are actually not gonna work. These were unfortunately advertised as the wrong size. They were supposed to be 25 by 42 by 14 
and unfortunately the outer diameter is the problem it's a 26 millimeter outer diameter and that's just not going to fit inside a 25 millimeter axle tube inside diameter was pretty much perfect 14.37 overall width was really nice at 42 millimeters but again these are out of the window here so if you guys do go searching for these original bushings you are going to have to use these uh, washers and that's where these other bushings i have here are nice because you don't have to use the original kind of outside cup washers so now i want to talk about these bushings they came from energysuspensionparts.com i'll have all the info linked in the description box below as well as the link to their website this was the only bushing i could find online that was the correct size again these were supposed to be the correct size, but they're not, unfortunately. So the price for these was $20 for the set. Not too bad. They are polyurethane, so they're supposed to give you a better ride. They're very, very hard bushings, and they're supposed to be a high-performance bushing. So I think these are going to be a much better quality than the original bushings. Now for some measurements on these. You got the outer diameter, which is perfect, 25.16 all the way around inner diameter of 12.79 which is a little small we may have to enlarge these but i'm sure with enough grease and enough hammering you could probably get the axle bolt to slide right through these the overall width is 38.75 it does have this little bit of extra here which is going to buffer the swing arm from the frame on the bike so like i said you don't you no longer have to use these original cup washers which is very nice and now for the usable width here right around 29.67 so obviously these are the bushings we're going to be putting in the bike and overall i am very happy with that i think these bushings are going to last a lot longer than the original bushings so let's go ahead and put these in the bike these are going to be very simple to put in here there's no metal to these bushings so I mean, we're just going to need to put very minimal grease in here. And as you can see, they're already kind of hand pressing in, which is great. So I'm going to take a piece of wood and just kind of hammer these in here. Oh yeah, these are going to be nice. So we're going to flip the swing arm over. Do the same to the other side. Get the bushing started, block wood, hammer it in there. Now we can test our axle bolt here. Yeah, so you can see, you can get the axle bolt started, but I think, no, it actually will probably just work. So it'll probably work. You guys will also notice I've just gone ahead and left out this center piece. There's not really a need for it. Like I said, uh, it's not going to do us any good anyways because these new bushings do not have a metal center part in them. So we're going to take the spacer tube along with these cup washers, put them in our parts container, save them for a rainy day. We're cleaning the axle up here. Got a wire wheel on this bench grinder. We're gonna clean the rust off this thing so it can slide through the red bushings without having to oversize them. Okay, so that's what a clean axle bolt looks like. So the rest is pretty simple. We're just gonna take and put some grease in the swing arm here the best we can. Wipe the excess grease away from the bushings. Leave a little bit so you can slide the swing arm back up into the frame of the bike easily. To reinstall the swing arm, we're going to put the axle bolt in, then the shock bolt. Then we're going to put the two 8mm bolts in the caliper line. Don't forget to throw the chain on before you put the axle bolt in there. So I've noticed the new bushings make the swing arm a little bit wider. So what we're gonna do here is stretch the frame just a little bit to help uh, the bushings or the swing arm go back into its place. So I have a jack here. We're just going to slip it in here and stretch this out a little bit. 
Time lapse. Alrighty guys, so it's as simple as that to put the rear swing arm on this thing. So I did want to talk about the bushings for a minute here, but first I want to talk about these bushings that wouldn't fit. So actually I came up with a solution for you guys if you want to use these bushings. So in order to use this swing arm bushing, what you're going to have to do is make it so this diameter is smaller. So you can take a hacksaw or die grinder, sawzall, whatever, anything that cuts metal cut this bushing lengthwise just this outer skin here the outer metal skin cut it lengthwise what that's going to do is allow you to crush the casing as you're pressing it into the swing arm here and you'll have almost factory bushings so the reason i'm mentioning this is because i actually had a pretty tough time getting the swing arm back in the bike like i said these polyurethane bushings are actually really stiff as you guys can see here they actually add quite a bit of gap uh, in the swing arm and the uh, the frame here. And, you know, of course, there's no air gap, but there's gap with the thickness of the polyurethane bushing flange. So one thing I would recommend to you guys when you're doing this is actually to maybe take, I don't know, uh, 16th of an inch or 2 16ths of an inch off of both of these uh, bushings just on the outer faces after you get them pressed into the swing arm. So that'll help you get them in the bike. Now you guys saw I had to take a jack and basically spread the frame so I could get these bushings in there. So, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I actually had to uh, stretch the frame a decent bit, more than I would have liked to have. Um, so we actually cracked some paint here, but I didn't crack the motor case or anything like that. So not really a big deal. I'm not too concerned about that. To use these bushings, if you guys are concerned about stuff like that, you're going to want to shave the bushings down and you're going to also want to chamfer uh, the edges of the insides of the frame on either side so it's easier to push the swing arm up in there because basically you're trying to push those bushings up into the frame uh, into a tight spot. So they're just not going to go without a chamfer or shaving them down a little bit. I actually personally like the cushion of the bushings on either side. Uh, so I guess we'll see how everything holds up and works out. Anyways, I'm leaving mine like that. So one other thing to talk about with these bushings, you guys can see this bolt is fully tightened down. And unfortunately, the bolt only comes through so far because the the uh, frame is stretched a little bit. So the problem here is that the locking nut here does not engage on this swing arm axle bolt. So that'll be interesting. I'll just have to see what happens as time goes on. And I'll give you guys updates in the description box or the comments below, uh, if not in a video on down the road. Not sure exactly what to do about this. I might crank this down a little bit more just so the locking nut is engaged with the threads of the bolt. So other than the couple issues that there are with this setup with these new bushings here, I, I really like the setup overall. I think that this would be a good replacement bushing for most people. So that's it guys, the bushings are installed. I'm gonna roll with it the way it is and I'll give you guys updates as time goes on. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out that description box below and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Woo!